What's up guys, today's video is about vlogging cameras. Uh, Kathy recently published a video about vlogging cameras and it does really good, so I'm talking about vlogging cameras. This video is about the feature sets that you should be looking out for when buying a vlogging camera. I don't know if you guys are familiar with like the five pillars of whatever, but I'm going to make something up. I'm going to say there are five pillars for vlogging cameras and they are basically five feature sets that needs to be present in every single vlogging camera for it to be considered as a vlogging camera. Like of course you can vlog without it, like Peter McKinnon, 1DX doesn't have a flip screen, but you know what? I get to decide what goes into this video. So I'm going to say there are five pillars for a typical vlogging camera. Uh, it needs to have good autofocus, wide angle, anti-motion sickness stabilization, mic and headphone jack, flip screen, and additional points for being lighter. Right, so this is the five pillars, this is the five most important things for a vlogging camera. So, good autofocus. Um, you're, you probably don't have a focus puller and you probably don't want to manually rack your focus, like, like manually rack your focus that was stuck. So you want the camera to figure things out and make sure you are actually in focus. And autofocus is so important that I would argue that it's more important than image quality. Because if your face is not even in focus, it doesn't matter that you shot this in 10 bit 4K. Nobody's gonna care if your face is not in focus. So hopefully my face is still in focus and uh, hopefully you're enjoying this video. Uh, the second thing is wide angle. I'm actually shooting this on 16 mil and if I hold it out like this, um, so every time I vlog it's somewhere uh, in this distance and you can actually see my half, half of my body and some of my background. And if you actually punch this into 24 millimeters, uh, this is what it looks like. And this is what like most of the vlogging cameras are shot at. It's shot at 24 millimeters. And you don't actually see that much, especially if you turn on stabilization and it goes in further. Uh, you're just vlogging your close up and everyone can see like every single pore on your face. Uh, don't do that. Especially like if people are watching this on a Mac, they wanna see stuff and not just your like face in the whole shot, right? So you want a wide angle uh, you want somewhere between 16 mil and 18 mil. That I would say is the acceptable range of wide angleness. The third thing is anti motion sickness stabilization. That's what I call a stabilization that is not exceptionally good, but it's good enough that when you're watching it, you're not like, oh, and then like you can't focus on what's going on and you're getting motion sick and you just want to turn on the video and you want to go to sleep. No, don't vlog like that, okay? You want to have a decent stabilization system so that your audience doesn't get motion sick. Some cameras has crazy good stabilization. I'd say it just needs to be smooth enough that I don't feel motion sick watching this video. The fourth thing is a mic jack and a headphone jack. Now this is very important because for vlogging, uh, you're probably not thinking about audio. So you want the camera to do all of the thinking. And if you have a mic jack, you can actually connect your camera to a decent mic. And I'm not saying you don't have to worry about audio anymore, but it makes it so much easier. Uh, audio is one of those things that you just don't want to worry about it and you want it to work, but that's not how it works. Like you actually need to put in the effort of getting good audio so that when you go into post, you don't hate yourself editing your video. But I would say that audio for like YouTube and for social media, it's not that rigorous because people are not watching this in a theatrical space. Most people are just watching it on their phone at best with their AirPods and you just want your audio to be good enough that it's enjoyable on the AirPods. And consider this, most people will be listening to your video but not watching it versus watching your videos but not listening to it. So it's really important to get the audio right and if you don't want to worry about it, at the very least, please buy a camera with a mic jack. And the last one is a flip screen because if you're filming something, you better be able to like actually look at it. There are some controversy of like what type of flip screen is the best, whether it's a flip out screen or a flip up screen or a flip down screen. Uh, in my opinion, flip down is a big no-no because you have the tripod beneath the camera and if your screen flips downward, uh, it's gonna get blocked by your tripod. But if you flip upwards, Kathy actually appreciates this because you don't have to look to the side. And if I actually look to my side screen, you can actually see that my eyes are like drifting a little bit. I'm not actually looking at you. So those are the five pillars for a good vlogging camera. And the bonus is of course weight. There are three advantages for a camera being lighter. So first up, 
if it's lighter, you can actually hold it out further and you doesn't strain your arm. So when I'm vlogging with the R5, I actually hold it out like this because it's so freaking heavy. But if I'm vlogging on the ZV-1, I actually can hold it a lot further. And that basically means that the lighter your camera is, it, it can actually get a little bit narrower and you will still uh, have your whole face, at least your whole face in the shot. Second, if it's lighter, it's easy for overhead rigs. If you actually think about it, like overhead rigs are really difficult to rig and you want like a tabletop shot. If you're shooting this on an iPhone, you can actually like tape it to the ceiling. If you're shooting on a GoPro, you can tape it to the ceiling. But if you're shooting on an actual camera, then you actually need to rig up something, probably a C-stand with sandbags. It makes overhead rigs a lot more difficult. And overhead rigs is also like one of those things that looks really easy on camera until you have to do it and you realize how many steps it is to set up a shot that's like overhead, which is why that overhead shots are pretty rare on this channel is because it's so freaking difficult to set up. And lastly, lighter means cheaper and lighter tripods. Because if your camera gets heavier, you need a heavier tripod. And one is more expensive, two, it adds even more weight to your system, right? So if you factor in the five pillars of vlogging cameras, we can basically eliminate almost every single camera in this world except for a few. I'll arrange this in the order of their weight, but they mostly also resemble their price difference. So on the very entry level, we have our iPhone and the GoPro. These are probably the best cameras to start vlogging with. I actually started vlogging with a GoPro and because it's super wide, it has pretty decent audio on board and it's got like crazy stabilization. Uh, this is what I started out with. And I figured if I actually want to connect an external microphone, I can actually buy an additional adapter that adapts the GoPro to a 3.5 millimeter jack and then plug in the microphone like this. But first, like, that looks stupid, <laughs> but um, I just moved on from there. So on the very entry level, you have the GoPro and you have your phone. And these actually work great. And we actually mixed in footage shot on the phone into our channel and we still do it to this day. And the reason that these stay at entry level is because of three reasons. First, audio. You can get around that with crazy setup. But if you're onto that setup, I'd say like move on. <laughs> uh, but you can actually connect this to a decent microphone and that's totally doable. And the second thing is low light. Uh, of course, these are small, their sensors are small, their effective aperture is small, so they don't let in as much light. Like think of a bucket under the rain, right? You don't collect as much rain if your bucket is super small. You want to collect as much rain if your bucket is really big, right? If you have a bigger sensor, if you have a bigger aperture, you can collect uh, more light. It works the same way, right? So these don't collect as much light and they do suffer in low light. Uh, the third thing is codec or workflow. This is kind of niche and you might not think about it at first. If you actually want to store the most amount of information out of this little camera onto a little SD card, they actually need to shove that information into a tiny package like headphone wires all tangled up and shove it into your pocket and when you need to work with the footage it needs to untangle all of that mess and that adds strain on your computer and this workflow is what we call h265 it's really compressed but it requires a lot of working post to untangle this information and actually work with it in a very smooth editing workflow. So I'm actually going to jump a little bit and talk about like traditionally, if you want to upgrade from a GoPro and a phone, what do you go to? Traditionally, your options are very limited, like probably going to have to look at an APS-C camera. For example, the A6600, which has IBIS, in-body image stabilization. And if you go with the APS-C, uh, you're probably going to look at something like a 10 to 18 mil. Because if you multiply that by the crop factor, uh, that gives you an uh, equivalent full frame image quality of a 15 to 27 f6. That basically means that this is going to be 16, so it's like wider, like this, it's going to look like this. but I'm actually shooting this on f2.8, but that camera is going to be f6, so it's going to look like this. Of course, it'll be like brighter because you're gonna compensate that, right? But you're going to have noise and also um, it might not look as smooth in the background. So that's what you get for shooting on APS-C, but you can, you can, you can totally do that. And in comparison, this is what it looks like on a full frame camera shooting f2.8. How much does it cost? An A6600 plus a 10 to 18 f4. Assuming you are getting these for new, you can actually get these for used, and it will save you a whole lot of price. Uh, it's going to be 10,798 
RMB. That's crazy, right? That is insane. Like, if you want to upgrade from your phone, you need to spend upward of 10,000 RMB just for like one step of upgrade. Which is why that there are intermediate steps between these, and this is what like the new vlogging cameras are trying to fill. Like in recent years, vlogging has become like the new popular thing, and everyone needs to get their hands on a vlogging camera and start vlogging. Uh, myself included. So I'm actually like very guilty for this trend. But companies have been trying to fill this hole for a very long time. And there are not a lot of good options. I managed to find two that I think are like good if you actually want to consider this. The first one is the ZV-1. And this is what I recommended to Kathy that apparently she doesn't like that much because um, the color science doesn't look as good as the Canon. So take my word with a grain of salt. But the other option that Kathy really recommends is the M50 Mark II, and that's by Canon. It's their EOS M lineup. And these two cameras are great because they have great audio solutions. They have a flip out screen like this. It actually flips out. And it's in general, it's made for vlogging. It's made to fill this gap. So you'll find this very comforting to use, I would say. The only thing is that for the ZV-1, you need to put on the Ulanzi wide angle adapter that brings this from 24 to an 18 mil. You also need this cage. Otherwise, if you screw a tripod underneath, it'll block the camera door. So if you have a tripod underneath, you can't change the battery. So if you put these accessories on, um, and this little package is insane because this costs around 5,000 RMB, which is significantly better than getting an A6600 plus a 10 to 18. And what you're getting is somewhere of an 18 to 40 mil uh, F5.4 to 8.4. So if you actually think about it, an 18 to 40 f5.4 to 8.4 is actually better than an a6600's f6. So if you actually do the math, this little beast actually gathers more light than an a6600 with a 10 to 18 f4. That is incredible. Like, you don't need a big sensor and a big camera. All you need is a lens that opens wide. And this perfectly fills in that gap. And if you want to go like the Canon route and if you really want that like Canon color, uh, you can actually pick up the M50 Mark II with an 11 to 24 f4 to 5.6, and effectively you're getting a 17 to 35 f6.4. So this is a little bit worse than the A6600, but you're actually getting pretty close. Of course, this will be 2,000 quai more expensive than this little thing, but you are getting the Canon color. So if you really want that like Canon skin tone, yeah, you can you can go that route. Just for the sake of like putting it out there so that we can like actually finish the whole spectrum on the very extreme end is vlogging on a full frame camera. And I actually don't recommend this even though I do. And that's because uh, I want like one camera to do everything. So I also vlog in the R5. But if you have the choice to pick one vlogging camera, it would not be the R5 because this camera is so freaking difficult to hold. And every time you vlog with it, everyone's staring at you and wondering why you are holding a giant camera out of your hand instead of a little camera that's like easier to manage. Like it makes me look like a madman walking on the street. Um, it's not a pleasant experience, but you do get that image quality though, because there's no matching for a 16 to 35 f2.8 in anything less than a full frame world. Like you can technically get close to it with primes or with manual focus lenses, but for autofocus, for vlogging cameras and lenses, like the closest that we got is the ZV-1 um, going at f5.4, which is a long way from 2.8. So if you really want that 2.8, you can vlog on a full frame camera. But uh, let me just say this again. It's not a pleasant experience holding a giant camera out of your hand. It's like doing a workout. You have to change hand every 15 seconds. But if you want to get that full frame, I would say the best option is actually the R6 plus the 15 to 35 f2.8. RF lens that will set you back approximately 30,000 RMB, but you can actually get cheaper, which is like what I'm doing now. I'm actually adapting an old Canon 16 to 35, actually the previous generation, and actually you can get that used for uh, a very reasonable price. And I would recommend that most people look for this DV1 or for the M50 Mark II. And if you really want to go pro, uh, APS-C is your highest limit. Please don't go anywhere above APS-C though. Uh, it's full frame vlogging unless you're like just setting it on a tripod like this. It's not going to be pleasant. I've, I've been told that sometimes like when I talk, you're not like actually understanding what I'm saying. I'm just like spitting out words. 
I'm trying to work on that. Uh, please leave a comment if you think like I'm going too fast or going too slow. Uh, that would really help me improve in the future. So if you like this sort of content, we have more photography filmmaking related videos on this channel. We have more videos about like our life, Kathy's life, my life here in college, uh, doing all kinds of things. So anyways, if you like it, like it, comment, subscribe, bye.